All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my weekly Q&A for this week leading up to Game of Thrones Season 6 Episode 4 Book of the Stranger. Right, so I got some good questions for this one and guys please uh, continue to send me whatever you got I think I'm going to make it a weekly thing for Tuesdays to do a Game of Thrones Q&A each Tuesday uh, and I don't get that many questions compared to the Walking Dead episodes and questions so if you have any questions for the Q&A you've got better chance of them getting into a video for Game of Thrones than you would for the Walking Dead so just a heads up for that uh, you can private message them to me through the about tab or you can um, you can just leave them as a comment and, and I'll put them together for Tuesdays and I'll do uh, some videos it's just so we can kind of add on. I try to include as much as I can in the reviews, but there's always things people kind of want to hear my thoughts more on or want me to analyze more or answer some questions in that or things that are brought up after the episode. Certain people notice that other people don't. Um, so Book of the Stranger. So I did my predictions, did the review for episode three. Spoiler warning if you're not caught up. And... Um, so one of the first things that uh, I saw in the comments that people want to hear my thoughts on is the R plus L equals J theory. Uh, and I haven't really given my thoughts on it yet in the channel. And it, the same thing happened with Kevan. Uh, somebody messaged uh, Lannister. Somebody m left a comment and said that I, I don't know what happens with him or, you know, this kind of thing. When I'm doing my reviews, I try to be careful because... The thing is, is that uh, the majority of the audience has not read A Song of Ice and Fire. And so I try to be careful what I go into in the reviews. I may not go into stuff that I consider to be spoilery. Game of Thrones, The Song of Ice and Fire is a, is a peculiar one with regards to spoilers because what you have is a really weird situation where George R. R. Martin, the, the source material, was used up before... You know, before uh, he was able to finish it, so the TV series had to go on past it. So what we're getting now is an interesting place where a lot of these theories that have been around for maybe I don't know how, how long you know last book was released and even before Game of Thrones started, you know, for a long time, some of these theories we're starting to kind of see them confirmed, sort of, in the television series version. Now, again, Song of Ice and Fire may may differ depending, you know, they, they are a little bit different, different, some different point of view characters and different things happening. But I try to always be careful about giving away too much because I don't want people to be upset, like, you know, if they get pissed off that I just drop something that they shouldn't know or that they have no idea. So I try to be careful, uh, especially with Kevan and, you know, some of the stuff that's going to happen with him because that is in the books and that hasn't been, that point hasn't been crossed yet in the TV series. So we're still with regards to that, it's, it's not all the way through yet. So there's still some things to come from that unless they change and do something different with it, which we'll have to see, which they might. They might remix it or something in the TV series. Um, but so, for example, the John theory being brought back to life is something that has been theorized for a long time in the books and everything. And we're, we got to see it confirmed in the television series HBO version. So now for the uh, R plus L equals uh, J theory, uh, which, you know, again, spoiler warning, be careful. If you don't want to know, then, then you don't want to know. But the flashback sequence, of course, on Sunday, where we get to see from Bran's perspective the actual battle between uh, Arthur Dane and uh, Eddard, Ned, um, really cool and, and his group, uh, you know, and how that, that whole thing plays out, which is different than, of course, the, uh, the story was told to Bran originally. So I'm really loving these flashback sequences. I, I used it as a thumbnail for the review. It was like the highlight of the episode for me because... Eddard was such an awesome character. He was one of, like, in the beginning of the series, he was my favorite character. And we don't get to see him anymore, of course, because he's killed. But these flashback sequences give us a chance to see a little bit more with him and can tie up some of the loose ends that have been mentioned in the show earlier on, such as his last kind of piece of dialogue he has with John, where John leaves for the wall, he leaves for the Night's Watch, and we get the sense from Eddard that he's he's proud of him. You know, he's not his real son, and we know that, and we know there's some drama there with Catelyn not liking John and this whole this whole kind of bit. Um, but but Eddard lets him know that that someday he will tell him about his mother. Someday he'll let him know. Of course, that day can never come because Eddard is killed off. Um, you know, and then now it's like five years later at this point, if you kill off the first season, now we're way in the future now. Um, but it's cool for us to get to see actually what happened with John and, and how that worked, because it's always been a topic of, of, of argument because Eddard is a very honorable type, uh, man, you know, he, uh, when he's talking to Varys there too, you know, he, he always looks at his code of honor and what he does and, and this kind of thing. And, you know, it, it's hard to kind of believe that he would, that he would do that. So, 
what it is actually r plus l equals j theory is is Rhaegar Targaryen and uh, Lyanna Stark, uh, you know, have John. So so those are his parents, and actually Eddard is not one of his one of his parents. Um, but he takes him in because uh, of course uh, his uh, his sister is is killed. Lyanna Stark is, is killed. So. Um, yeah, so we got to see a little bit of that with the Tower of Joy sequence and kind of the fight with uh, Arthur Dane, which was really cool. I don't know if we'll see the rest of it, but most people think that's good enough for us to be able to confirm that that is what happened. And I like it. I think it's a good theory. I think it makes a lot of sense because not only that, but, you know, John, he does look quite a bit different than the rest of, of our, our Starks, different hair color and everything. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I like the theory. I think it's a great uh, theory and... Um, it's probably true, just like the theory that a lot of people had that John would be brought back by Melisandre, which turned out to be true as well. So those are kind of my thoughts for you guys. If you wanted to know it on that, like I said, I try to be careful in the review because I don't, I just got to, you know, you got you to be careful and stuff. I try not to spoil things. Same with Walking Dead. I catch myself all the time. I'll start to talk about something in the comics that's not in this show yet. And, you know, you got you to gotta be careful. I don't want to ruin anybody's experience with regards to the show. So that's that. So I so hope you guys uh, you know, uh, are satisfied with that. Next one's uh, from uh, Saroma TWD, and he says, Trev, uh, I believe we will see the death of the Mad King with one of Bran's visions. What do you think? I would love to see that, like where Jamie, oh, man, like, like get somebody cast as younger Jamie. Uh, I think, I, I doubt we see it this season. I think maybe for next season or something. That would be so cool, man, especially if they wanted to go all out with it because what we've heard is that the final two seasons – are only going to have 13 episodes in total, which is kind of weak. Wouldn't that be cool if they're like, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll give you an entire flashback episode where you get to see, like, uh, you know, uh, what happened with the Mad King and everything, maybe a build up to it and everything, and then have it be the climax near the end of the episode when he's killed and everything. I don't know. It would just be so cool. I would love to see that, man. So I really hope so. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of bummed out. Like, each time I'm doing the reviews and stuff, I, I consistently think about we only have, like, you know, 13 episodes left after this season, and we only, have, like, that's like 20 episodes left of of Game of Thrones, uh, you know, it's like, oh man, you know, I really wish we could get more than that. So we'll see what they do and if they can, if they can manage to get something together for us or do something. I would really like to see the series continue past another 20 episodes. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting depressed already because it's like it's almost over and it's gotten so good. It's like, oh man, it's like the best part just before it ends, right? It's, it's probably what it's going to be. Uh, and I also want to mention the, um, in the review, I, I made some comments about uh, kind of the afterlife idea and stuff and I didn't want to piss any anybody off. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that too. That wasn't my intent. I did see some people in the comments that were a little bit uh, uh, upset about that and uh, so my apologies for that. It's definitely an emotional really emotional topic of uh, you know is there life after and this kind of thing so yeah I didn't want to upset anybody but I won't go into it any further than that next one's from Jacinta and she says I have a feeling that to Umber bringing uh, Asha and Rick on to Winterfell is a setup and he is really on the Stark side Umber refused to swear fealty to Ramsay using excuses and insulting his father Roose he also insulted Karstark um the wolf's head threw me off. Uh, I'm just hoping it wasn't uh, Shaggy Dog and the Umbers have a plan in place to help overthrow uh, Bolton. That would be really cool, and that guy did seem super badass. I liked him quite a bit. He was really funny in the episode. So I'd like to see that, and you got to think that he knows, you know, he knows about Ramsey. He knows who he is. He's He's pretty dark himself, too, so I, I like him a lot. I think he's a great character, and um, Ramsey, you know, he's he's got to get his. I think this season might be the end of him. Uh, maybe the finale for the season will be him being killed by John or, or overthrown or something. I really hope so. Uh, next one's from Just the Walking Dead, except it's a Game of Thrones question. No. <laughs> he says... Um, they're definitely setting up a Clegane Bowl. Uh, they mentioned a trial by combat, and they also mentioned the Hound. So that's a great call for sure. Uh, we'll see if in the television series that is true, but I think that would be really cool if they were able to do that, you know. And also, of course, who would win, the Hound if he's still alive or your kind of undead Gregor? Um, I would I would tend to side with the Hound in that case probably. So we'll see what happens with that, if anything. But I would really like to see that as well too. And, um, yeah, uh, last question will be from uh, Jonathan Gills. And he says, Hey, Trav, Game of Thrones, Q&A question for you. I haven't read the books or anything and was just wondering how much time has passed 
uh, from season one to this point in the show, how many months, years do you think has passed? Thanks for all you do. So for him, uh, yeah, I, so I had to actually research this one, and it looks like it's uh, about a year. This is what I thought, too, and it looks like uh, other people are, have confirmed this, that each season is like one year. So, you know, it's been about five years. We're in season six, season one, about five years, you know, give or take, uh, since the events of, of season one. So each season covers like a year of the story, uh, which is really cool. So all in all, it should be about eight years of story uh, with some flashbacks should be great to finish off the series. And that'll be it for today's Q&A, guys. If you have any other questions you want to send me and you want me to do another one this week, can do. Uh, send me your questions through the About tab, like I said. And if you like this Q&A and you want to see more next week and going forward, please uh, thumb it up below. You can also share and favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe, uh, please subscribe at the bottom left. That's it for this one today. I'll see you guys again uh, tomorrow for another Walking Dead video. As always, it's Trev, and I'm saying peace. See you guys.